Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day four, and today's node is the layout node. Now, before we work with the layout node, we have to understand that it exists in a different context. For this week, we're looking at lookdev nodes, so we have to understand where those lookdev nodes exist, and they exist within the LOP context. Now, to access the LOP context, you can drop a LOP network, just like this, and dive inside. All right, this will give you access to all of the nodes. You can see over here in the top right, it says Solaris. We're going to be working inside of Solaris to gain access to those nodes. They do not exist inside of the SOP geometry context as the nodes that we looked at last week. So the other way that we can access that is through the stage level. The stage level is just a LOP network. I would recommend downloading this file linked below just so that you can follow along if you do want to follow along with learning this node. So I just have three basic geometry set up in a SOP level geometry, and let's go to the stage level. Now, before we actually work over here, it would help a lot to change our desktop to the Solaris desktop over here. This will just change the way that all of these panels and windows are set up so that it's easier to work in the Solaris context. If we wanna work with layout node, let's first have a geometry over here, like a grid, and then we place a layout node, right? So we connect this grid to the layout node, and I'm just using a grid for example sake and for simplicity sake, but you can use any geometry. So this allows us to now paint things or draw things or place things onto our grid. Now, what are we going to place? Well, this is where we have to look at our working set. The layout node has options for placing geometries and assets into a scene, but firstly, we have to define what those assets are. So over here on this little teddy bear icon, we'll just open this up over here. And this is the default asset gallery that Houdini comes with. For now, we're just gonna drag in the barrels. So go ahead and drag barrel A, click on barrel B, drag that one in over there, and barrel C, right? Just like that. Now we have these three barrels over here. And if we just click on the place option and then click on a barrel, you can see that it allows us to place one in the scene. Clicking and dragging changes the size and we can place multiple barrels, right? If we click on a different barrel, it'll do the same thing, just like that. But the real power of this node does not come just from this placing. What it comes from is all of these other options. For example, we can do a full. And now if we make a bit of space over here, and go to the scatter options, you can actually see that this looks a lot like our scatter and align settings. You can see that we click over here and we click over there and it creates the square for us to place, right? We can change the brush type to be a lasso so that we can just exactly draw where we wanna place things. And if we adjust this minimum radius over here, it'll work like the scatter and align and give us varied sizes, right? Just like that. So as you can see, it gives us completed assets being placed into our scene with materials and everything applied. And these are all instanced, so they're all extremely efficient and you can place a lot with your layout node. Now, you might be wondering, how do we actually develop an asset gallery like this, where we have all of these assets ready to just be dragged into our layout node? This gets a little bit more complex. And if you want a lot of information on this, you can check out Solaris is Sweet. It's a series that I did. Maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I think it's a very helpful series for understanding Solaris. So we're gonna go over here and just say, create new asset database file. This is just going to allow us to create our own database with our own assets. So we can just call this my underscore database and say accept. As you can see now, this is now empty. That's because we don't have any assets inside of here. So how do we add an asset? Well, we're going to have to click on this little teddy bear and you can see here that we can load an asset wherever we may have one saved, give it a label and give it a thumbnail, right? So how do we actually generate an asset that can be loaded in? Well. For that, we're going to use the component builder. So this is the best way to do it, but there are other options for it. It's actually a lot simpler than it may seem. Over here on the left, you just bring in the geometry. So you say external SOP network, go ahead and choose the geometry that you wanna bring in. So I'm gonna bring in my box. Over on the right in the material library, you dive inside and just create a material. So a comma material, I'll just call this box and make it metallic. Then the last thing that you wanna do is just rename this last node to whatever your asset is called, right? Because if we take a look on the left-hand side of here, you can see that it says component output. That's not what we want to name our asset. Let's just rename it to box underscore asset. And on here, we're going to do a few things under our parameters. So we're gonna to save to disk. That's the first thing that we're gonna do. That's just gonna save our asset out. Then over here under the thumbnail, we're just gonna say generate thumbnail. What that'll do is it'll just take a picture of this box and use it as a thumbnail. So now let's go back over to our layout node where we have our asset gallery that we created. As we can see, it's still empty. And we can see over here that it is mydatabase.db. Go over here to add an asset. Let's just give it a name. That's going to be metallic box. Find the file for the asset. You can see that we have box underscore asset.usd. Accept that. 
and then just load the thumbnail for it, thumbnail.png, and then just say, okay. And there we have our metallic box. We can then drag it into here for our layout node. And then we can just go ahead and place these metallic boxes wherever we like. So let's just use the full tool and let's just fill this area with a bunch of metallic boxes. And if we switch this to a render view, you can see that we have all of our metallic boxes being brought into the scene. So a very quick overview of what we did. We created a layout node. In our layout node, we told it to create a new database for us. Then we went to the component builder. With the component builder into the left side, we choose an external sub. That's just going to be our geometry. On the right side, we choose a material for our material library. We rename the last node to the name of our asset. We then go ahead and save it to disk and create a thumbnail. Then in the layout node, we can easily go back and just add that asset, All right? Give it a label, choose the USD file and load its thumbnail, just like that. Right, and you can keep adding to this database and it'll be saved forever. So if you're working on a large project, you could have hundreds and hundreds of assets in here and just drag them in as you need them. One last fun thing that I just want to show you is if we go ahead and use the stack node, I'm just going to stack up some geometries. So let's go ahead and just choose the rubber toy. I'll drag it over there. With the rubber toy, I'm just going to go ahead and stack a bunch of them. So I'm just going to stack. If you want to actually move them around as if they have physics, there's a fun little thing that you can do. You just have to go over to your layout node. Now, instead of having them as instances, we're going to have instanceable reference. That's the only thing that we have to change. Again, if you want to understand that, there's loads of tutorials out there. People like Peter Arcara, Rob Storfer, Fiana Wong all have great videos. And also Solaris is sweet from me is also a video which explains all of this. But anyways, once you have that, you can drop an edit node. And with this edit node selected, just expand this and choose all of the objects that you want selected, as well as your ground plane. And over here with your transform handle selected, say use physics, add physics. Now, if we just select these and try to move them down, what you'll see is that they behave with physics, right? So you can make piles of logs. You can make all sorts of things, just a pile of rocks, whatever it is. Perhaps there's some rubble that you want to create, whatever it is, you can do it with that system. So that's just an overview of the layout node and all of the nodes that go along with it. I will have a file attached below that has all of the different component builders for the three geometries in this file. So I hope that this helped you and I'll be seeing you tomorrow for the light mixer lot.